What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. This is gonna be one of these videos that I just basically just talk inside my house for a little while. I just wanted to update you guys on a situation that happened this past weekend in my subdivision. Uh, so just, I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the story. I was getting ready to end my work day today and one of my neighbors pulled up and uh, this is how we do it in the country. You just honk and they go out to the road and we talk. Um, so I didn't think anything different. He, he honked and I went outside. We were talking for a little bit and then he uh, let me know about a gunman on the end of our street at about one in the morning this last Sunday night. Yes, I said that, a gunman, a person walking down the street with a gun at about one in the morning. Now, I do live out in the country. I do live in Texas, so having a gun is not a big deal to us, but nobody seemed to know who this person was. Um, and on top of that, there was a car. I don't know the, the type. I think it was like, I think he said a Honda or something, but uh, a four-door car, a black one, and it had one of the headlights that was out. Uh, some of the neighbors up the street, because everybody was starting to talk and uh, seeing, basically talking and saying what they saw out there. Um, this car was going up and down the street, up and down the street, and uh, apparently the, uh, the car was parked on the end of the road, and when people went out, the uh, car took off and went into the ditch and then took off and uh, left. But that, uh, it makes me think about my security around here, what I have to protect myself, um, people that live in this subdivision, do we have each other's backs? What's gonna go on? What's gonna happen? Um, I thought it was pretty cool talking to this neighbor. Um, he's one of them that lives towards the end of my street. I don't go down to that section too often, but uh, everybody around here is pretty friendly. Um, it seems like everybody that drives by always waves at me, I always wave back to them. Um, I don't know everybody by name, but we still I still know the vehicles and I get an idea where they live at. Um, there's probably, just to give you an idea, probably 20 houses or 20 different properties out here in the subdivision. And I'm one of the first ones as you enter the subdivision. So I don't go towards the end. This is exactly where this, this happened at towards the end of the subdivision. So the person had to have driven by my house to get out to where they were getting. Um, I don't know a lot of people by name out here, but I do know Tom and Rhonda. I know the, the neighbors across the street. I'm not going to mention their names. I don't want, know if they want their names in videos or not. And then also know a, a family up the street as well. Um, speaking of the family up the street, this was close to where this happened. And it was also around the same time frame. I don't know the exact night that it was, but um, one of the, the ladies up the street, um, I believe that she lives with her, or her daughter lives with her, and their, her two kids live with them as well. So it's the, the grandmother, the daughter, and two sons. So she messaged me on Facebook Messenger and had asked if... Uh, if I'd seen anything weird happening in our subdivision. And I said, not really. Um, I have noticed uh, some new cars going down the street that I haven't really seen before. Uh, she said that it was around 1.30 in the morning, I believe. I could be wrong on the time frame, but it was early in the morning. Uh, she said that they have uh, trail cameras on their porch and that it picked up somebody standing on their porch, uh, like I said, around 1.30 in the morning. Uh, this family has a fenced in yard, kind of like mine. And this person was unwanted, unwelcome, and was on their porch at 1.30 in the morning. So uh, the camera did catch it. It was dark, so they couldn't get a, like, they couldn't see the face or anything. They just saw that it was, a, I believe, a slender uh, built person. Um, there has been a couple of new people moving into the subdivision. I don't think it was them, but I also don't know why somebody would be on somebody else's property at 1 something in the morning without a, letting the homeowner know that they're going to be out there or not. So they had to be up to no good. Um, sorry, you hear barking in the background. I'll let the dogs out so I could do this video. So they wouldn't make noise, but they're outside making noise. Um, so like I said, uh, all this stuff has happened in the last two weeks or so. And it, it's got my mind thinking. I'm like, do I have everything I need to protect myself? Um, do I need to kind of just keep a better eye out on everything once it gets dark? Um, it is getting darker now. It's about 7.30 and it's already pitch black outside. So I did end up getting a couple of more uh, motion sensor security lights, um, kind of like the ones I put on the barn and on the house. Uh, they're very bright LED lights. So I have some on my mailbox now, one on each side. I have uh, also two on each side of my front gate now. So it's very, very bright out there. Um, I also have a, a solar uh, Wi-Fi connected uh, camera out there in the front, which goes directly to my phone. So I can tell if anybody's uh, 
out there doing something they're not supposed to be doing. I have one of the security lights right in front of it so it, it shines out and I can see exactly what's going on in case it's dark at night. Um, that's pretty cool to have. It notifies me on my phone anytime there's any kind of motion. So I could be asleep and my phone will go off. It'll wake me up. I go grab my, uh, my weapon that I have. Um, trying not to say uh, certain words too much because YouTube will kick off like out of the algorithm and all that kind of stuff because YouTube's kind of being stupid. But I do have uh, plenty of weapons. I have several different types. I don't need to get into all of them. I have plenty of ammunition for all of all those weapons. Um, I have some like, in case something like that happened and they got in before I could get to my, my good weapons, I do have hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat weapons, uh, just a couple of different things, tasers, uh, mace, all that kind of stuff. So I feel like I'm very well prepared. Um, I am at the house like pretty much all the time. Um, I have dogs, uh, as you know, I have little Baxter. It's just a little dog, he barks a lot, but he lets me know if there's something out in the yard that he doesn't like. Um, I can just tell by his bark, I've had him for six years now, so I know if it's either a person or an animal or something. Then I have Tucker and Daisy. Daisy's still a puppy, but Tucker is a decent sized dog. Uh, when the neighbor came up earlier, uh, Tucker had a, he has a real deep bark if he doesn't really know you too well and he ran straight to the fence and was barking. And when he stood up, he towered over the fence. So um, it's good to have big dogs like that as well to let people know like, hey, this person's got dogs. He's got a fenced in yard, it's locked. Um, which brings me to my next point. I've had people in the past ask why I don't park my car inside the property. Um, I'll be honest, I was just being lazy. I didn't wanna have to stop, open up the gates, get on my car, pull the car up, go back, close the gates and lock it up. That's changing. Moving forward, I'm gonna be parking inside my fence, up next to my house. I have a motion security light that will go off right over the, like the top of my car if there's anything nearby. Um, there was also another situation. Um, so this was sometime this last week, I believe. Uh, it might've been Sunday night. Uh, it was around 10.30 at night. That's normally when I'm starting to kind of wind down for the night and get ready for bed. Uh, I let the dogs out to go to the bathroom and uh, I look over and there's a truck sitting out front of uh, Tom and Rhonda's house. It was sitting there for, I don't know, a good five to 10 minutes. And um, out here, it's it's not too crazy to have somebody parked on the road. They might've been lost or something, or they could have been up to no good. I wasn't gonna risk it. Uh, Tom was at work and uh, that just left Rhonda there. And of course, I care for my neighbor. So I walked outside, I had my flashlight on me um, that has a built-in taser. Um, I walked outside, I didn't have it on yet. I walked over to Tom and Rhonda's yard. As soon as I got into their yard, I flipped it on. And as soon as I flipped on my, the flashlight, the truck started up and took off down the road. Uh, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So uh, I, I called Rhonda and said, hey, there was a truck outside. I'm headed towards your property right now. Um, I have my flashlight on. I don't want you freaking out if, if you see some lights and stuff going on. So. See, there's Baxter out there and Tucker barking. But I did let her know I was gonna go search her property, just make sure she was safe, all the animals were safe. Um, every, everything looked normal out there. Like I said, it could have just been somebody that was that pulled off the road and was lost or something. But um, I do keep an eye on everything and I wanna make sure I'm safe, my neighbors are safe. And after talking to the neighbor today, he wants to do a, a crime watch. And uh, I think it's really cool to get together, uh, exchange information with each other. He was saying to, uh, maybe he can get his, he said his wife or something could like get a hold of everybody and get a list of everybody's names and their numbers and their addresses so you know where everybody lives and then get a hold of the sheriff's department as well and just say, hey, this is the subdivision we live in. We're gonna start a little crime watch, um, maybe have their number so that everybody has it because it's the local sheriff's department. Um, where I live, if you dial 911, it'll send you to the next county over, uh, which is weird because I, I live almost right on the county line. So it'll, it calls the next county over and they have to transfer you to the correct county. Uh, so uh, maybe have the direct number to that actual sheriff's department. Um, and then also, I was just joking. I said uh, to him, uh, him and I were joking for a while after that. And I said, uh, we should put up a, bill, a big billboard out front uh, along the highway in front of our subdivision and take a picture of all of us holding all of our uh, our I'm just gonna say our assault rifles, our guns, handguns, and all that stuff, and just say not on our like not on our watch, and just 
that way anybody drives by they know that everybody in this uh, subdivision is packing and uh, can take care of things but um being realistic it is kind of gives you an eerie feeling knowing that somebody was out there with a gun and that i didn't know about it i didn't know about it until the neighbor said something but that's how we are we like to tell each other if we see something that looks off but um here in our subdivision we do have uh it's all different types of people different ages i'm probably one of the younger ones that have property out here actually i think i'm probably the youngest one out here that has property but there's different races uh, we have a uh, white people we have uh, african-american people we have uh, a bunch of hispanic people out here but we all get along like i said we all wave at each other when we uh drive when they drive by the house i wave to everybody they always wave back um, it's good to know that i have their back and they would have my back if uh blank hits the fan so uh, just be vigilant keep your eyes open uh, anywhere you live uh, get to know your neighbors exchange information in case something happens you never know when something's going to happen and if something does happen it's going to be too late if you don't have their information. Uh, so get their information. Just greet yourself to them. Just let them know, hey, I'm so-and-so. I live at this address. Here's my number. If, if you ever see anybody or see anything suspicious, just call me. So be safe. Get locked and loaded. Make sure you have plenty of ammunition. You know how to use your weapons. Um, yeah, it's just you just got to make sure that you're prepared for any type of situation that happens. And I know that I am. I uh, hope this video helps out people that haven't really thought about that kind of situation. But if you haven't, start jotting down ideas on what you could do to keep yourself safe. Sorry for all the barking in the background, but if you do like the video, go down and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.